All right. So good evening, everyone. I'm Alan, and I'm here to present to you my capstone project entitled Prediction of Rice Yield in Different Provinces of the Philippines. So before we start, I want you to take a look at this sketch. And this is inspired from a folk song called Bahay Kubo. And I believe this is uh, it, this symbolizes self-sufficiency in terms of food supply. Philippines, imagine Philippines is the Bahay Kubo and the plants around it are our food supplies. However, it's our current agricultural sector living up with this symbolism. Now, let's take a look with, our, with the current statistics. So first, take a look at, the, at this map which shows the abundance of our lands. However, this needs to be matched with proper in infrastructure in order for farmers to deliver their products directly to the market. However, we all have less than 15,000 kilometers of actual farm to market roads as compared to the required 48,000 kilometers. So with that, uh, farmers are now relying more on middlemen to sell their products and these middlemen are now profiting more than them. Next is the inconsistency of distributing land, land plants to the farmers. Over the last 32 years, 4.8 million hectares are distributed to the farmers, but there are still 600,000 hectares remaining. So why is the slow response? So here you can see in this infographic, you can tell that uh, most lands are still claimed by our landlords, corporations, and institutions. And pardon for the small font, but if you look further into it, you can see familiar names of our politicians here. The next is the increasing, uh, increasing fav favoritism towards agricultural trade importation. So importation is now constantly favored over exportation, and this results to constant decline in, uh, in our number of farmers over the years. So next is our local rice production. And as you can see, Philippines ranks fifth in, ri in rice production in ASEAN. So even if we already have International Rice Research Institute, Institute here, we are not able to take advantage of their knowledge and technology. As such, we are now left behind in other countries who we have taught how to plant rice in the past. Then, because of the less attention given to the agricultural sector, it is to be expected that it has the least share of the country's GDP. And even if we have millions of farmers, 43% uh, of them still belong to the poorest of the poor. So how can we help their plight and what can we do for them? So for me, I, I use data science to help predict the rice yield in different provinces. And although rice yield prediction is not a new concept because there are already existing knowledge base about it, and important factors such as rainfall, temperature, and topography are important. I believe that my capstone project can help determine other possible predictors to produce a more bountiful harvest. So in order to do that, first, uh, I, I gathered data from Philippine Statistics Authority and Open Data Philippines. Then I selected agricultural data such as fertilizer, equipment, facilities, dealers, frequency of disasters, and climate data, including rainfall, temperature, wind speed, and relative humidity. Then for my tired variable, this will be rice yield, which is measured by dividing the volume of rice over area harvested. So for my data cleaning and pre-processing, first I merge the Excel and CSV files to the, from the database. Then I remove the null values in the volume and area harvested columns. Then I drop the columns, which I did not mention before in the previous slides. Then after that, I arrive at a final data, data frame of 10,191 rows and 32 columns. Then for my feature engineering, first I remove the outliers, which are based on yield data, and I transform the regional data to provincial data because some of the data I gathered are only in regional scale, and thus I need to divide the number of provinces per region. Then I transformed the monthly data to quarterly data because the yield data I gathered was in quarterly basis. Then after that, I use one hat encoding to transform the categorical data to numerical ones. Then upon looking at the data, I arrive at the following observations and I focus on the top 10 rice produce producers in three different categories. First by volume, then by yield, and then by area harvested. As you can see, we basically tops all the three categories, but this is not the same case in other provinces. So why, why is that? That is because the amount of lands that are meant to cultivate rice are different from provinces. 
So this is why yield, yield data is more important than the volume in this case. So after that, I use I go to my analysis and I use regression model to predict the rise yield. So first, I use standard scaling of the data. Then I iterated various regression models such as Adaboost, XGBoost, gradient boosting, random forest, and decision tree, and other other regression models. Then from there, I selected the most most appropriate regression based on my metrics such as R squared and RMSE. Then I employ hyperparameter tuning, then determine the most important features. So for my results, and these are only the top five highest uh, metrics for among the models I set, I iterated. And as you can see, random forest has the highest among all of them. So I use random forest for hyper for my hyperparameter tuning and using randomized search CB, I arrive at the following best parameter values. Then uh, I also determine the metrics, the improved metrics, and I arrive at R squared of 0.774 and root mean squared error of 20.66. So explained by our aggregate six, only means that the difference between the predicted and yield data is by this much in terms of kilograms per hectare. Then I, I just plot the predicted versus the actual yield data. Then I determine the top 10 most important features of the model. And I just want to emphasize that the results here are based on my on the data set that I acquired. And I do not mean any disregards over the knowledge-based factors such as the climate data. I think uh, with the combination of the domain knowledge and what, what I found in my study, I believe that uh, this model can help in predicting uh, more efficient more efficient uh, values of price yield in the future. So how can these results help our local farmers? So first, we can invest more on machineries and facilities. And I believe farming modernization is very timely right now because uh, it greatly improves farming efficiency as well as speeds up the farming processes. Then I, I also want to emphasize the need to optimize fertilizer usage because as you can see, in different regions, different amount of fertilizer are applied. So we can look more into details about the amount of fertilizer used and make some research out of it and, and determine how much is needed per region and per province. Then finally is to improve disaster resiliency. And I believe this is very important because Philippines are frequently be, is frequent, frequently visited by natural disasters. And as you can see in this risk map, uh, provinces are subjected under different risk levels. So I believe this is important in strategizing farming practices in the future in order to minimize the risk and damages done by these disasters. So next for my limitation, and I want to emphasize the scarcity of available open source data today. Uh, before I, doing, I do this project, I consulted an expert in the field and he says that uh, agricultural data in the Philippines is very scarce right now, but fortunately for us, uh, institutions are now working on technology-based solutions so we can have more data in the future. Next is data normal normalization, and I just stated it earlier that I divided the number of provinces per region in order to get a normalized value. However, I because of that, I was not able to determine the actual distribution per provinces. So I think in the future, if provincial data are are available, this model can be improved much, much more. And finally, is, are the issue, is the issue of multicollinearity. And here in the, it, it just mean that, just means that the factors uh, inside the red box are, will find it difficult to determine the relationship with our yield data. So as you can see, uh, most of them belong to the calamities. And one possible recommendation from me is to, is to consider its effect as a whole and not just by specifying them one by one. Then for my recommendation, first is to conduct time series analysis. And I believe this will be more reliable if more data will be gathered in the future. Next is the consideration of socioeconomic factors. And I think this is very important for our local farmers because with the socioeconomic factors, we can 
we can determine the effects of factors such as farmer's wealth, educational attainment, and monthly income to the factors we discussed earlier, such as the number of equipment and the amount of fertilizers applied. And finally, we can also conduct study on different rice varieties, and we can also uh, employ machine learning here. For example, we can classify classify the yield data according to different rice varieties, but this will need more data as well in the future. So for my last for my last slide, uh, I just want to say that uh, we we can help uh, improving the status of our farmers, and this is very important because food security food security must be must be must be prioritized at all times. So thank you for listening and for questions. You can you are feel to ask. Thank you.